Every year, millions of Americans put their lives into the hands of complete strangers as they step into hospitals, medical offices, and clinics across the country. And day after day, this sacred trust is honored. An ancient oath is kept, and lives are improved and even saved because of the care that is received. But for all the advances in medicine, one hidden threat still eludes. It's a threat that takes the lives of nearly 100,000 people each year and endangers that sacred trust that patients and doctors share. It's a threat that's also completely preventable. According to the IOM, between 44,000 and 98,000 Americans every year get killed during their hospitalization by their care, not by their disease, by their care, by errors, by slip-ups, by things that shouldn't have happened. The culture's toxic. It's secretive, it's fragmented, it doesn't value uh, measurement. Throughout this national epidemic of medical mistakes, doctors and nurses have thought about new ways to eliminate errors. But the challenge remains. Can medicine change its ways? It is easy sometimes to say that these things are just inherent, that if you do a procedure, a patient may bleed, and there's really nothing you can do about the fact that they may bleed. And, and ultimately, there may be some truth to that, but it, it takes a little bit of time at least to ask the question, not is this just inherent in the process, but is there anything we could have done differently, at least to make it less likely. Tonight, a special inside look at how local doctors and nurses are improving the way medicine is practiced and the lives that are already being saved as healthcare learns to perfect the art of medicine. I mean, I was screaming, how get somebody, you know, and that's when they, the doctor says, call Code Blue right away, you know, and they, they called it and you could hear it over the loudspeaker, it goes throughout the whole hospital. So whoever's close by or the team, they're, obviously this team's ready and waiting because they were there so fast. So yeah, I give well, my hats off to them really. They, they saved my dad. <laughs> I really believe that. Imagine a doctor who could gather the knowledge of hundreds of experts and focus on a single task. A doctor with no boundaries. A doctor with access to not only the latest technology, but with the ability to create technology that does not yet exist. These are the minds of medicine. This is their story. Hello and welcome to Minds of Medicine. I'm Paul W. Smith. As millions of us visit hospitals and doctor's offices around the country, how many actually consider the risks? Now, maybe these risks are considered before a, a serious operation or procedure, but what about the simple tests or drugs we receive? Could even these be putting our health or even our lives at risk? The answer may surprise you. Dr. Don Berwick is a Harvard physician and professor. He is the co-founder of the Institute for Healthcare Improvement in Boston, as well as the world's leading expert in healthcare safety. He has created a breakthrough campaign focused on saving 100,000 lives in this country by June 2006. When you've built uh, an industry or an effort uh, in a fragmented way with everybody just trying hard to do their job right, uh, and you don't have a focus on the system, then when something goes wrong, the natural thing to do is blame an individual. The doctor must have screwed up. That nurse wasn't careful enough. You know, somebody must be at fault. Well, of course, sometimes that's the case. Sometimes it's an individual doctor or nurse. But actually, when, when something goes wrong for a patient, it, it generally isn't an individual that's, that, that's, that's the root cause of the issue. In the sense, we could, we could have taken any other individual, put them into the same circumstance, and the same bad thing would have happened. The problem is we take good people and we put them to work in systems that can't support them, systems that, that set them up to forget things, to drop the ball, to fail to communicate, and to do all the things that lead patients into hazards. Much of the focus on healthcare safety came after a 1999 report from the Institute of Medicine. It was called To Air is Human. It showed the stunning evidence no doctor or patient wanted to see, thousands of Americans dying from mistakes that were entirely preventable. But even with the outrage over this report, few changes occurred and mistakes continued to be made. We just had the fifth anniversary of the report uh, to Air as Human and uh, there has been a lot of national conferences to look back and say, well, what's happened? And the answer is, I guess, it's, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is 
uh, the wake-up call has been issued. Awareness is high. Uh, we understand a ton more about the nature of hazards. We know how patients get hurt. We know that it isn't bad doctors or bad nurses that are doing this. That's not the point at all. Do nurses and doctors in this country are trying really hard to do the right thing. It's not personal. It's not a personal matter. The problem is the systems are wrong and we have the evidence, we know what those look like, and we've learned how to change the systems. The problem is, we haven't done it. Along with Dr. Berwick, hundreds of healthcare organizations nationwide have taken on the challenge of making healthcare safer and more efficient. To accomplish this, the Institute for Healthcare Improvement outlined six areas for improvement. These include a rapid response team to help save patients before they become critical, an improved and speedier system for treating heart attacks, an improved process for checking drugs and their effects with each other, and three initiatives for eliminating infections in hospitals. Henry Ford Health System is one of the few nationally to take on all six of these initiatives. But we've taken all six on together because of the urgency of the need. I mean, this is a serious uh, matter to increase the safety of our hospitals. We think we need to get moving, get moving pretty fast. We should be able to lead the safety drive because of the way we're organized. And we're organized in a way that all of the pieces needed to provide the whole spectrum of healthcare services are owned by the same organization. So we should be able to pull everybody necessary to the table to change processes and coordinate care in a way that's a lot more facile than other organizations. One of these missions was to save patients in the hospital before they become critically ill with a unique group called the Rapid Response Team. Dr. Bruno Di Giovanni is the Director of Medical Critical Care at Henry Ford Hospital and the lead physician for this team. If you look at patients who ultimately go on to have a cardiac arrest in the hospital and look six to 12 hours before they have their arrest, there are usually warning signs. Their heart rate becomes erratic, or their blood pressure becomes very low or very high, or they become confused, or some other thing happens that says to the practitioners, the nurses, and the doctors taking care of the patient, gee, this guy isn't doing well. But they don't have a mechanism to do anything with that. They, can, they know if the patient actually does arrest, then there's a whole team that'll come running to help them once the patient arrests, but there hasn't been a team that will come running prior to the arrest. And so what the rapid response team is a way of engineering a team that can come earlier. Fast acting care teams, also known as code blue teams, have been part of the care offered at Henry Ford for years, saving thousands of patients who needed immediate emergency care in the hospital. For Robert Moore, this team's immediate response was the difference between life and death. He was in respiratory distress. He was admitted in the F2 floor and he got worse and worse, his lung collapsed. So they made a quick decision to call the code blue. And within seconds, not minutes, but seconds, they, the room was filled with people and he was intubated and up in ICU before I knew it. Yeah. He's lucky to be here thanks to that yeah, code died. blue. I, I think he was a goner without them here. I'm sure I would have died because the doctor said that, I, I sort of woke up through this procedure and said, I'm done. I mean, I knew I was gonna die, and um, I'm sure they've sa saved my life. Henry Ford's new rapid response team not only reacts to patients like Mr. Moore who need immediate care, but also works with doctors and nurses to identify patients before they slip into a more serious code blue condition. These people are on the edge. We, we come here to help them get over that edge. The people who are discharged from the ICU 24 hours are the most likely to be the ones that return back. And we are a fail-safe mechanism to prevent that from happening. It's a collaborative uh, process in treating a patient. I mean, we, we need everybody's hands at the time of emergencies to prevent this patient from uh, becoming critical. So it's very important to have collaborative care. We are seeing lots of doctors and lots of nurses feel much more comfortable, much more open about saying, I, I don't feel comfortable with this situation, could you come help? To use flying as, as an analogy, you, you want to fly in a plane where anybody uh, working on that plane feels comfortable saying, you know what, this plane can't fly today, I'm seeing something I don't like, and until we fix it, we're not going to fly. That's the kind of culture we're trying to bring to medicine.
When we come back, improving treatment efficiency for heart attack patients and how one man survived thanks to an improved process and his fast-acting physicians. At any time, you can go to henryford.com to learn what every patient must know before they enter a hospital or a doctor's office. We'll be right back. It's a scenario that plays itself out every day in hospitals across the country. A man or woman comes into the emergency room complaining of chest pains. A common reason for admission to hospitals, a heart attack. The, the blood supply to the heart muscle is interrupted and heart muscle can get injured and that's very dangerous. Uh, in fact, uh, for people having heart attacks, uh, mortality rate in hospitals usually around 10 or 11 percent. That would be an average uh, figure. Thanks to really great science, we know a ton about how to treat heart attacks properly, though. And uh, with relatively simple medicines, aspirin, for example, uh, and a f relatively simple maneuvers, uh, we can uh, reduce the death rate. If you get everything right, you line up six or seven steps that should happen for a heart attack patient, you can cut the death rate in half. We have hospitals that have gone in a year from 10% death to 5% death. That's a big number. Uh, the problem is most hospitals aren't that reliable. Many emergency rooms aren't equipped to provide primary angioplasty, a life-saving procedure that opens up a clogged heart vessel. Because of this, often the time it takes to get care can be devastating for patients like Carl Swanson. According to the New England Journal of Medicine, 40% more heart attack patients would survive and avoid major medical complications if they could receive this procedure within 90 minutes. Fortunately, a new program for delivering life-saving heart attack treatment in less than this time has been initiated at Henry Ford. Since Carl went to Henry Ford by County Hospital, he was able to take advantage of this improved system and his life was likely saved because of it. During the day, I had some discomfort and in fact I had joked with a friend that evening that I said, okay, I guess I'm getting, uh, like everybody else, I'm developing a hiatal hernia because I had some discomfort, heartburn, gas uh, in the chest and that came and went all that day previously. Didn't think anything of it, went to bed and then at one o'clock I got woke up very rudely. Mr. Swanson was a gentleman in his 60s who was really quite healthy and really quite active. Uh, about a day before and the day prior to his coming to our, our hospital, he had had some vague discomforts, went to sleep, and early that morning uh, awoke with unrelenting chest discomfort, quickly brought himself to Bi County Hospital where an EKG was done immediately upon presentation. Mr. Swanson's EKG showed a serious heart attack was underway. Doctors at Henry Ford Bi County Hospital sent the cardiac care team into motion. An ambulance was called. Teams at Henry Ford Hospital were assembled and prepared to perform an angioplasty. Because of this efficiency, Carl was able to get immediate care as fast as any in the country. And because of this, he suffered no serious damage to his heart. The key is getting uh, adequate restoration of blood flow as, as soon as possible. So we took this on as a major quality improvement initiative to uh, streamline the process in this complex a uh, large health system and hospital to get this care to people as quickly as possible. One of the doctors explained it could have been very serious. It may have gotten the best of me. And I'm very grateful the way things just fell into place. And I look to be uh, around for another 20, 25 years. More recently, doctors at Henry Ford have been able to improve heart attack treatment efficiency to under 87 minutes. And although this is a big accomplishment, preventing infection may be even more challenging. It's estimated that over 2 million Americans each year contract an infection while in the hospital. Over 100,000 of these patients eventually die. Well, hospital-acquired infections are common, and they're very serious, because people that get those infections who are already sick often, uh, many times, uh, die. So reducing these uh, uh, it reduces patient injury, it reduces length of stay, it reduces discomfort, and most importantly, it saves lives. Henry Ford Hospital is attacking the issue of infection in three different areas, surgical, ventilator-related infection, and catheter placement. 
Catheters are a common tool for doctors and nurses to provide instant access to the bloodstream. In fact, over 4,000 patients annually at Henry Ford will receive one. But because it is often difficult to find the exact location to place the catheters, this process can be a major source of infection. Using a few simple solutions, as well as an innovative approach for placement, Henry Ford has helped greatly reduce this risk. They now rank among the best in the state for infection prevention. Dr. Peter Watson has helped initiate many of these quality solutions within Henry Ford Hospital. Well, there are multiple different types of bacteria that can cause infection and one of the things we have to be careful about in the hospital is that a lot of particular bacteria that are in the hospital setting are highly resistant. So the necessity of preventing infection, uh, especially through skin contact, is even more important. There are a lot of things that can complicate uh, placement of large central catheters like this, but this is a technology that will reduce the risk of bleeding from the procedure, in addition to uh, reducing complications related to infection and other things related to central venous lines. Uh, so what we're really trying to do is uh, do a very standard procedure that we've done for many years, but do it in a much safer way. Healthcare standards are set in our country by leading academic organizations and large flagship systems that everyone knows represent the best our country has. Everyone aspires to to be what they are and to, to copy what they do, what they do that they teach us. Henry Ford is absolutely in that league. It's a place that is, sets a standard for us. It's a standard we should pursue. There are a lot of places that aren't like Henry Ford. Of course, there are, there are small community hospitals, rural hospitals, uh, places that look very different. But in the end, they're going to turn to the to the pace setters to understand what you know where true north is. And uh, and so what Henry Ford does is a very very important thing for our industry. When we come back, the information every patient needs to know before going to the hospital. At any time during this episode, you can go to HenryFord.com and find out more about the 100,000 Lives campaign and how Henry Ford is helping to lead a nationwide charge toward improved patient care. We'll be right back. To get a free copy of this program, call 1-800-604-0200. The life-saving healthcare improvements we've seen tonight are both exciting and groundbreaking. But even with these changes, it's still up to each patient to make the most significant improvements. The biggest thing a patient can do is to begin to speak up and ask questions and ask Frank. If you're going to have a procedure, it's a fair question today to ask the physician what are all the safety measures that are going to be taken to make sure I have the right thing done. And if you have any doubts about your medication list or other aspects of uh, care, speak up. Leading healthcare organizations recommend before any serious procedure that patients bring with them a list of questions. When possible, patients should bring a family member or friend along to help ask any questions or to communicate for them if necessary. It's also recommended that patients make sure all the medications they're taking are discussed with the physician to ensure there are no adverse reactions. I think we've gone great strides in, in just over a year, but this process can constantly be improved upon and we constantly meet and reevaluate it and try to shave a minute here and shave five minutes there. And uh, it's, it's more than just time. It's, it's ease of access for the emergency room doctors, it's feedback to the patient's original primary care physician, it's patient satisfaction, it's the experience of the staff here at Henry Ford. Uh, we'll never be done coming up with processes to improve this overall program. Henry Ford is, is an inspiring organization to deal with. I mean, it, it's a place that, that has the capability to think about what it does, to be self-critical and measure its results, commit to change, to act like a system. And so I was thrilled when Henry Ford signed on really early to the campaign, the 100,000 Lives campaign. That organization is committed to all six of the changes that we're after. They already are underway in accomplishing many of them. Uh, they're just giving it even more energy and precision. And I, look, I will be working with them to watch, uh, watch their mortality rates change as they get even better than they've been. Uh, it just shows the power of what you can do when you act like a system. Saving patients' lives is only the first step in the continual improvement of patient care. Working in partnership with the Big Three and Health Alliance Plan, 
Henry Ford doctors will soon put all prescription orders through a computerized reconciliation system, one of the first in the country. And further improvements have been set in motion to improve the diagnosis and treatment of many disorders. Quality improvement in healthcare has been important around here for years. We were the first organization 15 years ago to take industrial principles of quality improvement and apply it to healthcare. That, of course, is common practice in the industry today. So I, I think we have, we have endeavored over the past 15 or 20 years to be on the cutting edge of quality improvement and safety in healthcare services. Although future improvements are exciting, saving lives continues to be the sentinel focus of Henry Ford and other fine organizations across the country. Preventing these mistakes may never make headlines or get noticed in obvious ways, but the rewards of this work will be felt for generations to come. When the goal of 100,000 lives is reached, the truth is none of the patients saved may ever know it. It's not just the number that matters, it's, it's the change in the way we behave. It's the idea that, that we can decide to get something done in this industry and mobilize the hearts and minds of the workforce and get it done together without beating up on anybody. And, and uh, I, I think that's another kind of success, a change in the, in the mentality. Uh, so yeah, I want to save those lives and we'll do it. But I also want to develop an attitude in our country that we can decide to make care better and we can get it done. And, um, we're ready. Tonight we've seen a very serious side of medicine, but it's important to remember, avoiding proper medical care can be even more dangerous. Make sure to take the time to educate yourself about your health care and your health care providers. Make sure your physician is board certified and don't ever be afraid to ask questions. You can learn the things every patient must know by going to henryford.com.